Tonight we have a guest speaker who is coming to minister to us. They're a guest speaker because we have to guess who it is. <laughs> and since you can't guess, I want to introduce our dear sister, Shala, who is going to come for the very first time. You would notice that she sat in a normal seat. She did not come to the front. She thinks she can fool me. <laughs> but I know when you come here for the first time, even for the second and third and fourth and fifth time, when you stand up there ready to come here, you have butterflies in your stomach. So she wanted to stay there and praise and worship. So come on, one more time. Put your hands together for Charlotte. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good night, Holiness Revival. <laughs> God be praised tonight. We give God the honor, the glory for who he is. Has he been good? Has he been great? Has he been faithful? Amen. So for that, that alone, let's give him some glory. Father, we honor you tonight. We praise you and we magnify your name. All right. Heavenly Father, tonight, oh God, we thank you, oh God, for everything that you are. And even, oh God, as we are about to sit at your feet to learn of you, Father. Father, I pray, oh God, that you will open our hearts. Open our hearts, oh God, to receive who you are, Lord. Open our hearts, oh God, to know who you are. To know that you are the God who, are, who is in absolute control and there is nothing to worry about because you have got us. And so, Heavenly Father, tonight, Lord, we pray against every distraction, everything, oh God, that will, that will cause our mind to stray. Father, I pray, oh God, Lord, that our minds, oh God, would be focused on you, that we will be able, oh God, to receive your word, oh God, and that that word, oh God, would bring transformation to us. And for this, we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> so tonight, we are going to be in Psalms 42. And it is one simple verse, Psalm 42, 5. Psalm 42, 5. And it starts with a question. What is the question? Oh, they didn't find it yet. <laughs> the question is, why are thou cast down? O oh, my soul, why art thou disquieted within me? The question is, why? Why? Why when we know God is faithful? Why when we know God is all-powerful? Why when we know all these things? Why is our soul cast down? Why is there a disquieting in us because of life, because of the situations, we will call them, what we, what, um, as the young people say, I can't believe I'm saying as the young people say, I reach. <laughs> the situation. So we have many reasons why our souls can be disquieted and why it could be Downcast. Some of them we could find in the Bible. We could find people with similar things in the Bible. We think of Joseph. Betrayal. It was bound to be by your brothers. Could be by a loved one. That kind of betrayal does wound to the soul. And even though we know God, it takes a while. <laughs> 
What about Naomi? Great loss. One after the other. It seemed like wave after wave after wave of loss. And we are disquieted. We are cast down. What about we crying out to God for something? Lord, we are uh, asking for this. Yes, no. Yes. Decades. <laughs> Anything coming. Some of us, we're not even disquieted. We forget that. <laughs> we put that on our shelf. <laughs> eh? And what about when we get the great prophecies? All that we are going to be. And yet, it didn't come to pass yet. We had all these great words spoken over us. And they have not come to pass. That is reason for your soul to be disquieted, you know. That is reason for you to be cast down. You know? What about the creditors? What about them bills that piling up? Every month in a deficit. Every single month. Ole listener. I know where it is. Where's the date today? The 26th? Right. I know where it is to get paid on the 28th. And by the 30th, nothing. <laughs> Must be about five, ten dollars in the account. And you're wondering how I go make it. And some of us have been making it by the grace of God. But we just want that we don't have to battle. We don't have to go like uh, this, that, the other. Ah, all right, I ain't go do this, I ain't go do that, I ain't go do the other. And we want to wait on that day when we in living. I can't even say paycheck to paycheck, day to day. You know? And then, and then too, we have, we have times when these things happen to us because of our own complacency, you know. We make bad choices. And listen, it was no big bad choice, you know. We didn't just get up one day and decide to make a bad choice, you know. It was a little here, a little there. A little chat there, a little flirt there, a little, I'm tired this morning, I didn't feel to go to church. A little, I'm tired this morning. No, I'm busy this morning, I can't read my Bible. And sometimes we, not, we reach in a state now where the desire to be in God's word and to be in God's house, not there anymore. That could cause disquieting in your soul. You know? Anytime you know the glory of God and you don't have it. That is a difficult season, you know. It's a hard, hard season, you know. So we could make bad decisions and put ourselves in a situation where our soul is disquieted. And what about some of us who have shame? Shame. A bad past. Some things we used to do that, oh my God. It has some of them the world know and some of them the world don't know. And we live in with that shame. Every now and again we get a little reminder of that shame. I will tell you something about shame. Shame is something that we hide, right? Anything that is hidden isn't processed. And anything that is not processed, you can't get delivered from. So even if it's you and God, he knows already. He knows already. So even if it's you and God alone, say, God... I mess up. God, I live in with a shame and I want this stain to go away. He is able. That is what Jesus came for. The devil lying and saying, no, it go always be like that. You had to live with that. No. Yes, we make the destiny altering decisions. We saw it with David. But the fact of the matter is, God give us the grace that even in the midst of the consequences, we can have joy. Even in the midst of the consequences, we can have peace. 
So it is up to us to appropriate the word of God and accept what God has given to us. Don't hide in the shame. Don't hide in the disgrace. I'm not saying don't, don't, don't feel bad for it. I'm saying lay it at God's feet. And he is able. He is the one who is able to deliver you. So, we all have things, different things that we are concerned about. Why we are sitting, may not be here tonight, but some other time, and we are disquieted. And we are worried and we are concerned. Do you know that concerned is another word for worry? Which is another word for lack of faith. <laughs> which is another thing for lack of faith. Now we ain't talking genuine concern. Eh? We're talking about the overly concern. You know, we as parents, we are concerned for our children that we would try to manipulate and try to control and try to do everything to make them walk that straight and narrow. And we didn't even realize we're heading into God territory. Because all they're doing is they're hearing us and they're not hearing God. We're blocking out God's voice. So we're operating in a way that, that is not in alignment with God's will and purpose. Because, you know, we're concerned. You know, we're concerned. So tonight, I would like to share with you, now we understand that we, to some extent that we are disquieted, right? What I don't want, it's okay to process it. It is okay to lay it at God's feet. What we shouldn't do is be overwhelmed by it. Where, where as soon as we get up in the morning, I the first thing on we mind. As you hit your head, oh my God, I have to go and take on them on work today. Or maybe you turn so, I don't know. <laughs> you understand? So we have all these things. And you know what? At some point in time, you know, we figure it normal. We figure that all these things that we are going through, it, 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 it is acceptable. And you know what is the sad thing about it? Hear what we have to ask ourselves. I'm saved. If I die now, if Christ come now, I'm going to heaven. Yes, we could say that. We could say that. Do we have peace? Do we have rest? Are we experiencing John 10.10? 10? Are we experiencing the abundant life that Christ died that we could have right here on earth, even in the midst of everything that is going on. It possible. It possible. And the reason why it is, it, it is possible is because of the final part of this verse. What is the final part of this verse? Hope thou in God. <laughs> hope thou in God now when God is your hope when God is your refuge Philippians talk about the peace that passed all understanding the situation ain't changed but you happy the, 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 watch now Yes, the money might not be there, but you know God is in control. Your mind comes to a place of peace and rest. No anxiety on your chest. No worries on your mind. Because you know why? I don't know how. I don't know when. But I know he go do it. And you know what? You know what is one of the major things the devil has get we with? We going up in God business. Listen how we just get up in God business. But how God go work this thing out, boy? You're adding one and one. You ain't seeing two. You're looking so, but it ain't adding up. So you now get up from praying, and then the devil put in your mind all the ways that God can work it out. So you're back to where you was before. <laughs> 
So listen, I, it have this thing that I've learned. I, I, I learned to put a stop sign in my mind. The stop sign say, I ain't going there. God in control. Anytime the thoughts start to come of how God, how God go work it out, because he does tell you, you thinking of how God go work it out, but the devil carrying you down to a road where you seeing where God can work it out. So that he trick. So you had to stop your mind and say, here, well, I don't know how. I don't know when, but he will work it out. Right? And next thing is only feelings. Lord, I'm angry. Lord, I'm bitter. Lord, I find this one real hard to forgive, you know. But here this God. This is how I feel right now. Lord, I lay it at your feet. Help me to walk in a way that please you. Help me to behave in a way that please you. So this is how we work through. Right? So now let me talk about God. Why we should trust in this God. This God that we know save us. This God that we sometimes, we know he died for us. But the real extent of his love. The real extent of his power and might and his graciousness. And that we are the apple of his eye. It didn't hit here yet. It didn't even hit here yet. So we operating like we like sitting ducks waiting. So why should we trust in God? We have three. I would like to present to you tonight three reasons why we should trust in God. One, he's omnipresent. Two, he's omniscient. That means he's all wise. Three, he's omnipotent. He, this God, is our glory and the lifter up of our head. That is the God that we serve tonight. So tonight we're going to go through each one of these, um, each one of these. When we look at the omnipresence of God, that means that he is everywhere. He is seeing everything. He knows every single thing. When we look at Hebrews, Hebrews 4.13, it says nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Nothing, absolutely nothing. He can be in the past, the present, and the future. Now, what are to do with my problems? You must be wondering. What are to do with my problems? It means that because he's seeing everything, we get into omniscient. He knows what to do. He is everywhere. There was a story of, I think of, it was Elijah or Elijah, one of them, right? And everything they talk in secret, Elijah knew. All the plans of the enemy. Because God was there, he gave the information to Elijah. And so they sought his life. So you have an upper hand when you have somebody who have all seeing eyes. And you know what's you, you know what going on with these eyes? The eyes of God? He said, they, wrote, they roam through, to and through the earth. And he is looking for those whose heart to show himself strong on those who trust in him or whose hearts are perfect towards him. So he's all Present. He's all present. He's omnipresent. Right? And now we want to look at the omniscient. Now, this is the one that has blown my mind. Because somebody could have power, but it could be stupid. We see that. Right? They could have all the power in the world, but they don't bound to be wise. Right? And then you have people who wise... But they ain't have no power. They go sit down on the corner and they have the great plans and all of that. But people that just not listen to them because they have no power. Right? And this, it, 
watch now, it had a time is. It take me a couple of weeks. I say, Lord, what is that? What is that where your power, your power meet your wisdom? What, 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 what um, omnipresent, I'm sorry, omniscience and omnipotent. What, when the two of them get together, sovereignty came up to mind. I say, yes, we have sovereign people, but then they don't want to have, you know, much power. And then, then the word come to mind. The providence of God. It's where omnipotent meet omniscient. And he works all things. He takes all things and he works them together for good. Please don't stop there. To them that love the Lord. <laughs> We, you know how we like to quote. <laughs> so, when, this, when we are talking about the omniscience of God, we are saying that he's all wise. Do you know what that means for your situation? He have the solution. He have the solution. You sleepless at night and God had the solution. You thinking of all the different ways how it could work. And God had the solution before the beginning of time. You trying to work out this thing. And he able. Isn't that. That didn't blow all your mind. <laughs> huh? He said. And he said of Jeremiah. Before I form you. And you had to say that before he formed Shala, before he formed me, he knew you and called you. You are not a mistake. You are not a mistake. You are not a oops. God designed you with purpose. And don't let nobody tell you the front. You have a purpose in this earth that nobody else could do. You were designed for that purpose. Now, if you ain't do it, you go find somebody else. I'm being real honest with you, right? But he created you to do something. So don't let nobody undervalue you. Right? Don't let anybody undervalue you. So when we are looking at the omniscience of God, this one is one of my favorites. Oh, the depths. Both in the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgment and his ways past finding out. You know, we, we have this thing. It are times when we want to be merciful. And we, we so want to be merciful that we err in, that we're not doing judgment. And it has so, sometimes when we want to be so judgmental that we're not being merciful. Jesus Christ have the perfect balance. It is called the cross. He didn't cut any corners. Mercy and justice met at the cross. It was the payment and it is where, it is where he displayed his love. So I'm just showing you a little bit of the, the omniscience of God. How he could take all things together. And work them. There is no time God, God saying, oh God, what go do, boy? This one is a real hard one, boy. God don't do that. He had the answer from since the beginning of time. It's no time when he's saying, okay, well, two of my children quarreling. What side I go take, boy? If I take that side. Mm -mm. He know exactly what to do. He know exactly how to find resolution in the midst of that situation. So if we have two people who love God and saying, God, tell me what to do and I'll go do it. You will see the solutions we will get. So it's very, very important that we trust in the omniscience of God. When God tell you do something, do it. Because you know why? He, he, watch now. Out of the million or billion probability, he know the best one. 
That's how we have to look at it, you know. He is omniscient. There is nothing, absolutely nothing that he does not, that he does not know. And then this is, this, uh, it, it have a couple in Isaiah. Isaiah have the um, thing on this is, have thou not heard? No, have thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the creator of the, of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. That, um, Isaiah 40, 13, um, 13 and 14 says, Who had direct the spirit of the Lord? Or who being his counselor taught him? You know, sometimes we just try to be God counselor telling him what to do. The question is, how dare you? Huh? We know what best. Huh? So who taught him? Whom, with whom took he counsel? Or to who instructed him? Who taught him in the part of judgment? Who taught him in the part of knowledge? Who showed him the way of understanding? Who could claim that? He is the omniscient God. There is none that can compare to him. Amen? And now we are going to look at his, at his omnipotence. That means he is all-powerful. Nothing and no one could match his power. Nothing and no one can match his power. He spoke this world into being. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, who? Who? Created the heavens and the earth. Psalm 19, all you went all your time. It's chunky, is the word? Chunky? You see Psalm 19? Watch now, Psalm 19 does talk about the beauty of the earth. The engineering of the earth. And then it tells you about the word of the Lord. How it's pure and it's sweeter than the heart. Watch now, you make a Bible study on that. Psalm 19. But I'll give you one to four. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. And the firmament show, for, show forth his handiwork. Imagine day to day they utter speech. Night unto night they show knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their line go out through all the earth and their words to the end of the earth. In them he set the tabernacle for the sun. That, tell me if that is not a great God. That is a great, great God. All right? And then we, say, then we see Luke 1, 37. For there is, well, sorry, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And then this is one of my favorites. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 32, 17. Say, ah, Lord God. Behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and thy outstretched hand. Um, is there anything too hard for thee. Are well, you excited about this, God? <laughs> eh? And then this is the one that has always be praying it. Now on to him who is able to do exceeding, abundant, above all that we could ask or think. So the question is now, why is you, why are thou disquieted? Why are you disquieted? Why are you cast down today? We understand process, you know. We understand that every day is not a bright day. But you can't go through a season where war is me. We can't have that mentality as Christian. It's time to look up. 
it is time to look up. We do not serve a wimpy God. We serve El Shaddai, Lord God Almighty. We serve El Elyon. Who is he? The most high God. We serve Adonai, the Lord and master of the earth. So, it doesn't matter what is going on. If we look up and we look to God, we will always find something to glory in. We will always find a reason to praise. When we look up and we see God, sometimes I would tell all you, get up in the morning and watch the sunrise. The lucky people who live in Santa Cruz, get up and watch the mist, watch the greenery. <laughs> if you're living on top of a hill and you could see the sea, get up in the morning and look at it. If you go and you stand up outside your door, you will hear the birds singing. Join them in giving God glory. <laughs> because you know why? Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So in order for you not to be disquiet, and in order for you not to be troubled in your soul, now I'm not saying, you know, like the, I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm not saying that. Everything, everybody asks, I'm blessed and highly favored, but you're, you, you know you're, you're going through. I'm not talking about ignoring what you are going through. I'm talking about looking to God in spite of. Because that is the way our head would be lifted up. As we lift up our head, as we lift up our eyes to the Lord, believe me, that is where the strength will come. That is where the strength will come. So, look to God. Look to God, not tonight alone. Look to God all the time. The trials are there. So I'll give you some examples of the betrayal. Where's the end of, where's the end of the betrayal? After Joseph get betrayed, where you end up? You're going through, you know, God have a big plan. End up second in command. <laughs> After that betrayal, think about Naomi. When Naomi reached in, when she reached back, she said, call me Mara, a better. Huh? Look where she end up. Look at where she end up. For you who think, well, God gave the promise and I ain't know where it is. Sarah at 90 years old. He makes everything beautiful in his time. Don't get impatient and move ahead of him. He makes everything beautiful in his time. Well, you know the one I had to talk about, I didn't mention him before, but um, Balaam. And these people who decide that, you know, we go try to trick God, we go try to do, you know, do as much wrong within right. God tell me not to do it, but I go try this and try that. We know... It didn't end well for Balaam. If you're in that position tonight, where you're playing games with God, where you're saying, well, I want God, but I still want this, or, you know, and, and it, in, 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 a, in a sense, it is greed. Sometimes it's loss. It would not end well. Here, what you have to do. You have to go and say, Father, I have this desire and it is not of you. Help me. Renew my mind. Either kill the desire or change the desires of my heart. You could have that honest, 
honest prayer with God. Because that in, that in itself is a disquieting of the soul. You will never have peace. So it is very, very important that we, you know, we don't try to help God along the way. Or we have this thing where we do partial, diso partial obedience. It is still disobedience, okay? I'm just saying, I'm putting it out there, right? <laughs> okay. So, if you are disquieted, it is not your end. It is not your end. I would like to encourage you to trust in the omnipresent God who sees all things, the omniscient God who knows all things, and the omnipotent God who can do all things. And when you have all of this, this God will see you through. He will not leave you. He will not fail you. He will not forsake you. If it is not good, it is not the end. So trust him. All right? So I would like to close with, some, with, um, with Psalm 103, where it says, you want to turn to it or you will just let me read it? You turn it? <laughs> it says, bless the Lord. I want all you to say, bless the Lord. Uh -uh. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Again, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. One more time, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. <laughs> all right. So bless the Lord of oh my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord of oh my soul and forget not his benefits. He forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth your life from destruction and crown you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Listen now, he satisfy your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed as eagles all the over 60s. <laughs> the Lord executed righteousness and judgment on the oppressed. He has you, okay? He is merciful and gracious. He's slow to anger and he's plenteous in mercy, right? So... Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. My son. <laughs>
come on Friday night. I know it was a faith-building message for you to know who your God is and so that you could trust in Him. Sometimes we still need some undergirding and that is okay too. So if you need a little undergirding, come to the altar. It's open to you. <laughs>
Halleluja. David, king over all Israel, living in a castle, palace, sorry, having everything his heart could desire, not having a care in the world about wanting anything, yet he penned these words, why are you so cast down, O oh my soul? It could happen to anybody. It's not about what you have. There are times when your soul will be cast down. But we have got a hope. And that's where we have got to put our trust. Put your trust in God. Were well, you blessed tonight with the word? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.